Hello guys and welcome to geek for geeks In this video, we are going to talk about loops in Go programming language. I hope you are excited, so let's get started. First up, we will look at loop which causes a block of code to execute over and over again. The for keyword is used for all loops in Go. The most basic type of for loop looks similar to that you see in other C-like languages. There is an init statement which is usually used to set up a variable, a condition statement which causes the code to continue looping until the condition is false, and a post statement which runs after each iteration of the loop. This is followed by a block of code within curly braces. The code within the curly braces get executed on each pass through the loop. So let's try running this. And you can see that the loop runs three times. On the first pass, i gets set to 1. The variable i gets set to the value 1 initially. Then it runs a test on i. If i is less than or equal to the value 3, then the loop will go ahead and execute at this time, which it is. So it goes ahead and runs and it runs the format print line called here and passes the value of the i variable to it. So it prints out the value 1. Then following the loop, the post statement runs, which increments the value of i. That is this i++ here that you see. So i is 1 and i++ sets the value of i variable to 2. Next pass through the loop, it tests whether the variable i is less than or equal to 3. And since it's currently set to 2, it is. So the loop runs again, it prints out the value 2, which you see down here. The post statement runs again, incrementing i from 2 up to 3. Then it runs the test one more time. Is i less than or equal to 3? Well, it's set to 3 currently. So yes, that's true. It runs one more time, it prints out the value 3. The post statement runs, increments i from 3 to 4, and it runs this test again which does not pass because i is currently set to 4 which is not less than or equal to 3. And so the loop stops running and our program completes. The post statement can be whatever you want. For example, if we wanted to start our loop at 3 and go down towards 0, we could test whether i is currently greater than 0 and we could change our post statement to be i minus minus. This subtracts 1 from the value of the i variable every time it gets evaluated. So let's save this, try running it. And there we go, our variable starts at 3, gets decremented down to 2, gets decremented down to 1, at which point it is no longer greater than 0 and our loop stops running. We could also change our loop back to the way it was originally and increment by steps other than 1. Well, first, let me show you an equivalent to i++. We can use the plus equals operator which takes whatever value is currently in the variable and adds on to it. So if i is currently set to 2, for example, i plus equals to 1 would assign the value 3 to i. So let's try saving this, running it and you can see that as before it goes 1, 2, 3. But we can skip by steps other than 1 using the plus equals operator as well. Let's change our condition to continue running as long as i is less than or equal to 5 and we will update i by 2 each time. Save that, try running it. Now our variable will skip 1 each pass through the loop. but Whatever you do, don't fail to increment your loop counter variable. If we had used i plus 0 for example, which would set i back to the same value every time it runs, then if we were to try running this, we will get an infinite loop and we will have to press ctrl c to cancel out of the program. Now, as I mentioned, this code here in the curly braces is a block and that means that the rules regarding variable scope apply here. If we define a variable before the loop, 
then its value is accessible within the loop and it's accessible after the loop as well. But if we define the variable within the loop block, then it is not accessible after the loop is over. The same holds true for variables that you declare in the initialization. These are considered to be a part of the block scope for the loop. So the i variable is accessed within the block, but not afterwards. So this line here is OK because it accesses a variable that was declared before the loop ever began. But this line is not because the i variable was declared within the for loop initialization statement. And this line is also not OK because the loop variable was declared within the loop block. So we get an error for those lines. You can see the compile error down here in our console. So that's a brief introduction to the for loop. So basically it causes a block of code to execute repeatedly while a condition is true. But often we need to run a block of code just once when a condition is true and not at all when a condition is false. For that we have if statement. We will look at those in the next video. Well, this is the end of the video guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If so, leave a like and drop a comment. See you in the next video. Happy coding until then.